Good afternoon. This is All India Radio. I'm Anuja Kumar and with me is Sarabjit Kaur with the Midday News. The headlines. Nation pays tribute to Chief of Defence Staff General Bipin Rawat and others who lost their lives in a chopper crash in Tamil Nadu recently. Last rites to be performed with full military honours in Delhi Cantonment this evening. President Ramnath Kovind addresses the Human Rights Day function in New Delhi. Says equality is soul of human right. Our rights are shared responsibilities. Special chartered flight brings back stranded Indians and Afghan citizens from Kabul. Three Holy Sri Guru Granth Sahib Ji, Ramayan, Mahabharat and Bhagavad Gita also bring being brought back to the country. Prime Minister Narendra Modi to deliver Indian national statement in the first U.S. organized virtual summit for democracy this evening. U.S. sanctions on Iran are not relevant to Chabahar project, informs External Affairs Minister in Lok Sabha. Law and Justice Minister Kiran Rijuju says video conferencing rules implemented in 21 high courts to deal with pendency of cases. Over 131 crore 18 lakh doses of COVID vaccine administered in the country so far. Recovery rate stands at 98.36%. Prime Minister to inaugurate Saryu Nahar National Project at Balrampur in Uttar Pradesh tomorrow. Seventh International Science Festival of India to kick start today in Panjim, Goa. As India marches towards administering 150 crore vaccine doses against COVID-19, News about the new corona variant is a cause for concern. In this situation, we appeal to our listeners to get fully vaccinated at the earliest and help others get vaccinated. Please continue to follow these three simple steps to stay safe. Wear a face mask, maintain dogas ki duri for social distancing, focus on hand and face hygiene. For any COVID-related information and guidance, contact National Helpline numbers 011-2397-8046 and 1075. And now, the news in detail. The nation is paying tribute to General Bipin Rawat and his wife Madhulika Rawat, who lost their lives in a chopper crash in Tamil Nadu recently. Union Home Minister Amit Shah, External Affairs Minister Dr. S. J. Shankar, Finance Minister Nirmala Sita Raman, Health and Family Welfare Minister Dr. Mansukh Mandavia, Information and Broadcasting Minister Anurag Thakur and several union ministers today paid tribute at the official residence of General Rawat. National Security Advisor Ajit Doval, BJP President J.P. Nadda, Congress Leader Rahul Gandhi, Members of Parliament, Chief Ministers of several states, Officers of the Indian Army, Navy and Air Force and foreign dignitaries has also paid tributes to the departed souls. After paying floral tribute to General Rawat and Madhulika Rawat, Home Minister Amit Shah said he paid his last respects to General Bipin Rawat and Madhulika Rawat with a heavy heart. He said General Rawat was the epitome of bravery and courage and it was very unfortunate to lose him so early. He said his commitment towards the motherland will forever remain in our memories. The last rites of General Bipin Rawat and his wife Madhulika Rawat will be performed with full military honours at Brar Square Crematorium in Delhi Cantonment this evening. His funeral procession will start from Kamraj Marg after 2 p.m. and reach Brar Square Crematorium. The mortal remains of General Rawat and others who lost their lives in the Tamil Nadu chopper crash were brought to Palam Air Base in Delhi last evening from Sulur. Prime Minister Narendra Modi visited Palam Air Base and paid his last respects to General Bipin Rawat, his wife Madhulika Rawat and 11 other military personnel who lost their lives in the chopper crash. Defence Minister Rajnath Singh today paid tribute to Brigadier L.S. Leda at Brar Square in Delhi, Kant. The last rites of Brigadier Leda were performed this morning. He lost his life in the Tamil Nadu chopper crash recently. Haryana Chief Minister Manohar Lal Khattar, Army Chief General Manoj Narawane, Navy Chief Admiral R. Hari Kumar, Indian Air Force Chief Air Chief Marshal Vivek Chaudhary and National Security Advisor Ajit Duval, among others, also paid tribute to Brigadier L.S. Leda. 
Indian Air Force has constituted a tri-service court of inquiry to investigate the cause of the tragic helicopter accident on 8th of this month. Defence Minister Rajnath Singh yesterday said that a tri-service inquiry regarding the chopper crash has been ordered by the Indian Air Force headed by Air Marshal Manwinder Singh. President Ramnath Kovin said that India has saved many lives by providing COVID vaccines to the people of the country. He said COVID-19 pandemic has affected humanity and made a devastating impact on vulnerable population. While addressing at the Human Rights Day function organized by the National Human Rights Commission in New Delhi today, the president said COVID-19 pandemic is not over yet. He applauded the country's initiative for running the biggest vaccination drive. He congratulated doctors, scientists and corona warriors for their heroic efforts during the coronavirus pandemic. Highlighting the importance of the National Human Rights Day, Mr. Coven said, equality is soul of human right. He said our rights are shared responsibilities. These are inalienable rights dependent solely on the fact that each person belongs to humanity irrespective of ethnicity, gender, nationality, religion, language and other divisions. He said NHRC issued several advisories during the COVID-19 pandemic and worked with other stakeholders to strengthen the health preparedness. Stressing on the climate justice, Mr. Covid said, degradation of nature is irreversible and the world is witnessing harmful changes in the global climate. The world is waking up to the harsh reality, but it is yet to build the resolve to make decisive change. We owe it to our children that we save Mother Nature from the worst effects of industrialization. The time is running out. I am glad that India has taken initiatives at home as well as at the recently held Global Climate Conference, which will go a long way in restoring the health of the planet. Especially commendable is India's leadership in the International Solar Alliance and a series of measures to promote green energy. The Rajya Sabha Deputy Chairman Hari Vansh said that today marks the 73rd anniversary of the adaptation of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. As soon as the House met for the day, Mr. Harivansh said that the theme is finding solutions to the deep-rooted problems of discrimination in the country and all should work towards upholding the basic human rights. He said it is the responsibility of all to be inclusive and reiterate unwavering commitment to do the same. Railways Minister Ashwini Vaishnav today said railways have transported around 43,422 tons of liquid medical oxygen LMO during COVID-19 pandemic by utilizing 945 number of trains loaded with 4,294 number of tankers. In a written reply in the Rajya Sabha, the minister said as a result of the initiative taken by the railways to run oxygen special trains, LMO could be transported to the COVID-affected areas in time. External Affairs Minister Dr. S. J. Shankar asserted that U.S. sanctions on Iran are not relevant to the Chabahar project. During the visit of Prime Minister Narendra Modi to Iran in May 2016, a trilateral agreement to establish International Transport and Transit Corridor Chabahar Agreement was signed by India, Iran and Afghanistan. Replying to questions in the Lok Sabha, Dr. Jay Shankar said, this agreement was signed in 2016, but possession was taken in 2018. Since then, it has handled 160 vessels and 3.2 million tons of bulk and general cargo. The minister said Chabahar port project agreements are limited to Iran and in terms of port operations, agreement with government of Afghanistan is not required. Minister of Law and Justice Kiran Rijuju has said the video conferencing rules have been implemented in 21 high courts. The minister informed these are in trial mode so that a uniform video conferencing across all courts of the country can be provided. Replying to a question in the Lok Sabha, Mr. Rijuju said in future video conferencing will also help deal with pendency of cases as it has helped litigants and lawyers. The minister said the e-courts integrated mission mode project is one of the national e-governance projects being implemented in district and subordinate courts of the country. 
The Law and Justice Minister said a total of 18,735 courts have been computerized till date. He said the wide area network project under e-courts project is aimed at connecting all districts and subordinate courts complexes spread across the country using various technologies like optical fiber cable and radio frequency. Discussion on climate change is underway in the Lok Sabha post question hour. Ramesh Biduria of BJP said many countries have brought legislations to deal with air pollution. He however alleged that the previous government did not do anything for 30 years. Mr. Biduri brought up the subject of Bhopal gas tragedy and Warren Anderson. He highlighted the different projects undertaken by the Prime Minister during his time as the Chief Minister of Gujarat. The discussion is continuing. Health and Family Welfare Minister Dr. Mansuk Mandviya informed the Lok Sabha that every morning the expert group holds a discussion tracking the progress of the Omicron variant and the status of resources in the country. He said there are currently 23 Omicron cases in the country. The minister reiterated that the government is making all possible efforts so that the country achieves 100% vaccination as soon as possible. Replying to questions in the Lok Sabha, Dr. Mandavia said India has done best comparing the vaccination rates to other countries. He said India has completed 86% of the first dose. Suspended opposition MPs of Rajya Sabha today resumed their dharna in front of the Mahatma Gandhi statue in the parliament complex. They have been demanding revocation of their suspension. These opposition members were suspended on the first day of the current session for their unruly behavior in the last monsoon session. Yesterday, they withdrew their dharna due to demise of Chief of Defense Staff General Bipin Rawat and his wife Madhulika Rawat, along with 11 others, in a helicopter accident. Over 131 crore 18 lakh doses of COVID vaccine have been administered in the country so far under the nationwide vaccination drive. Union Health Ministry said more than 74,57,000 vaccine doses were administered in the last 24 hours. The ministry said 7,678 COVID patients recovered during the last 24 hours and the national recovery rate stands at 98.36%. Till now, more than 3 crore 41 lakh people have recovered from COVID-19. The country reported 8,503 new COVID cases in the last 24 hours. Currently, India's active caseload is around 94,000. The union government has said that more than 140 crore COVID vaccine doses have been provided to states and union territories so far. The health ministry today said that over 18 crore 80 lakh unutilized vaccine doses are still available with the states and UTs to be administered. You are listening to the Midday News on All India Radio. A reminder of the headlines before we move on. Nation pays tribute to Chief of Defence Staff General Bipin Rawat and others who lost their lives in a chopper crash in Tamil Nadu recently. Last rites to be performed with full military honours in Delhi cantonment this evening. President Ramnath Kovind addresses the Human Rights Day function in New Delhi, says equality is soul of human right, our rights are shared responsibilities. Special chartered flight brings back stranded Indians and Afghan citizens from Kabul, Three Holy Sri Guru Granth Sahib Ji, Ramayan, Mahabharat and Bhagavad Gita also being brought back to the country. Prime Minister Narendra Modi to deliver India National Statement in the first U.S. organized virtual summit for democracy this evening. U.S. sanctions on Iran are not relevant to Chabahar project, informs External Affairs Minister in Lok Sabha. Law and Justice Minister Kiran Rijiju says, Video conferencing rules implemented in 21 high courts to deal with pendency of cases. Over 131 crore 18 lakh doses of COVID vaccine administered in the country so far. Recovery rate stands at 98.36%. Prime Minister to inaugurate Saryu Nahar National Project at Balrampur, Uttar Pradesh tomorrow. 7th International Science Festival of India to kickstart today in Panaji, Goa. For quick news updates round the clock, follow us on our Twitter handle at AIR News Alerts.
Welcome back to the Midday News on All India Radio. Special flight arrived in Delhi airport from Kabul this afternoon carrying 110 stranded persons. Three Sri Guru Granth Sahib Ji and Hindu religious books also being brought to India by flight. The flight brought back the stranded Indian citizens and distressed Afghan citizens belonging to Hindu and Sikh community. Three Holy Sri Guru Granth Sahib Sahibji from historical gurudwaras in Afghanistan and ancient Hindu religious scriptures including Ramayan, Mahabharat and Bhagavad Gita also being brought to India by flight. After the arrival the Sri Guru Granth Sahib Ji will proceed towards gurudwara Guru Arjan Dev Ji Mahavir Nagar and the Hindu religious scriptures will proceed towards Asmai Mandir at Faridabad Indian Forum World Forum has thanked Prime Minister Narendra Modi for ensuring safe and smooth passage for the passenger Sikh delegation has also expressed happiness saying that they are returning to their homes with the help of the Indian government Prime Minister Narendra Modi will deliver India's national statement at the first summit for democracy this evening. Yesterday the Prime Minister participated in the summit at the invitation of United States President Joe Biden. In his remarks, Prime Minister Modi recalled that exactly on this date 75 years ago, India's Constituent Assembly had held its first session. He highlighted India's civilizational ethos as one of the original sources of democracy. Mr Modi said that the democratic spirit including respect for rule of law and pluralistic ethos is ingrained in Indians he added that the indian diaspora carries it too and contributes to the economic well-being and social harmony of their adopted homes prime minister narendra modi will visit balrampur in uttar pradesh tomorrow and inaugurate the saryu nahar national project at around 1 pm The work on the project started in 1978 but due to lack of continuity of budgetary support interdepartmental coordination and adequate monitoring it got delayed and was not completed even after nearly 4 decades the prime minister's vision for farmer welfare and empowerment and his commitment to prioritize long pending projects of national importance brought a much needed focus on the project Consequently in 2016 the project was brought under Pradhan Mantri Krishi Sichai Yojana with the target to complete it in a time bound manner the renewed focus on the project has resulted in the project being completed in only about 4 years Prime Minister Narendra Modi spoke to the distinguished architect Bal Krishna Doshi and congratulated him on being awarded the Royal Gold Medal 2022. Mr Modi said Bal Krishna Doshi's contribution to the world of architecture are monumental. Royal Gold Medal is UK's highest honor for architecture. President Ramnath Kovin will reach Dehradun this evening. He will review the passing out parade at the Indian Military Academy Dehradun tomorrow morning. Tight security arrangements have been made in view of the president's visit to the city. The president will leave Dehradun tomorrow afternoon. This is All India Radio giving you the news for quick news updates round the clock. Follow us on Twitter at AIR News Alerts. Best wishes to all consumers for Azadi ka Amrit Mahotsav. Hallmark ensures purity of gold. Always purchase Hallmark gold jewelry. For any consumer related complaints please contact National Consumer Helpline's toll free number 14404 issued in public interest by Department of Consumer Affairs Government of India Jago Grahak Jago. And now let's listen to our special program Azadi ka safar highlighting the importance of the day during the freedom struggle Azadi ka amrit mahotsav Azadi ka safar with AIR news birth of a nation India's glorious freedom struggle is one of the greatest struggles the modern world has ever witnessed AIR news brings you a glimpse of the struggle every day i am rajagopal acharya and i am speaking from madras all india radio broadcasting station i have been given the honor of inaugurating this hindustan akashvani in madras that was freedom fighter 
and last Governor General of India and the only Indian to hold the position, Bharat Ratna, Chakravarti Rajakopalachari, on the opening of Madras All India Radio Studio. The new Akashwani is intended to cover not only the city of Madras but the districts in the province. It will broadcast messages and programs from outside the province and even from countries abroad. Popularly known as Rajaji, he was born on the 10th of December 1878 and was a confidant of Mahatma Gandhi, who used to call him the keeper of my conscience. Rajaji was born in Thorapalli, Madras Presidency. He completed his law degree from the Presidency College, Madras, and began his criminal law practice in Salem. He joined public life after becoming the chairperson of the municipality of Salem in 1917. His personal interaction with Gandhiji led him to give up his legal profession in 1919 and thereafter he fully dedicated himself to the cause of the independence movement. He participated in agitations against the Rowlett Act and the non-cooperation movement, the Vyakam Satyagraha and the civil disobedience movement. When Mahatma Gandhi led the Dandi March in 1930, Rajagopalachari did the same at Vedaranyam in the then Madras presidency. He was jailed five times by the British authorities for his active role in the freedom struggle. Following the Madras elections in 1937, the Congress came to power in the Madras presidency and Rajagopalachari was elected as the first premier of the presidency. In 1939, Rajagopalachari issued the Temple Entry Authorization and Indemnity Act under which the so-called lower castes were allowed to enter temples. Rajaji was elected to the Constituent Assembly from Madras. He was also appointed as Governor of West Bengal during the time of partition. After independence, Rajagopalachari was chosen to be the last Governor General of India and his tenure lasted from June 21, 1948 to January the 26th in 1950. He briefly served as Tamil Nadu's chief minister between 1952 and 1954. He also founded Swatantra Party. <laughs> He was an accomplished writer who made lasting contributions to Indian English literature and is also credited with the composition of the song Kural Vandrum Illai set to Carnatic music. His most popular works include a retelling of the Mahabharat and the Ramayana in English. In 1954, he was conferred with the Bharat Ratna for his contribution to Indian politics and literature. Rajaji passed away on the 25th of December 1972. We also remember freedom fighter Veer Narayan Singh, who was martyred on the 10th of December 1857. Narayan Singh is considered by many as the first freedom fighter from Chhattisgarh, who spearheaded the 1857 War of Indian Independence in Chhattisgarh. Narayan Singh was born in 1795 in Sonakhan area of Chhattisgarh. Narayan was arrested by the British in 1856 for looting a trader and distributing the goods amongst the poor in a severe famine year. However, he escaped from prison on the 28th of August 1857 and reached his hometown to form an army of 500 men. A powerful British army was dispatched to crush the Sunakhan army. The British captured Narayan Singh and he was hanged on December the 10th, 1857 in Raipur. Shaheed Veer Narayan Singh International Cricket Stadium in Raipur has been named in his honor. We salute the great freedom fighter. That brings us to the end of this episode of Azadi Ka Safar with ARR News. See you in the next episode tomorrow. Swadhinta Andolan Ke भारतीय जनमानस को उत्वेलित कर स्वतंत्रता का अलग जगाने और मातृभूमि के प्रति सेवा समर्पण और त्याग की ज्वाला प्रज्वलित कर देने वाले अमर गीतों पर आधारित विशेष कार्यक्रम आजादी के तराने सुनना न भूलें 
एफ एम गोल्ड सौ दशमलव एक मेगा हर्ट आरोप प्रत्येक शुक्रवार शाम चार बजकर पैतालीस मिनट पर परिक्रमा कार्यक्रम के अंतर्गत आजादी के तराने सिर्फ आकाशवाणी पर वाइस प्रेसिडेंट एम वेंकैया नायडू टुडे रिमेम्बर द ग्रेट फ्रीडम फाइटर सिगेश स्टेट्समैन एंड लास्ट गवर्नर जनरल ऑफ इंडिया सी राज गोपाल आचार्य ऑन हिज बर्थ एनिवर्सरी इन अ ट्वीट मिस्टर नायडू सेड ही वॉज अ मल्टी फैसेटेड पर्सनैलिटी अ स्कॉलर थिंकर राइटर एंड अ लीगल ल्यूमिनरी मिस्टर नायडू सेड सी राज गोपाल आचार्य इनक्रेडिबल लाइफ कंटिन्यूज टू इंस्पायर मैनी प्राइम मिनिस्टर नरेन्द्र मोदी टुडे ऑल्सो पे ट्रिब्यूट टू एमिनेंट फ्रीडम फाइटर थिंकर एंड स्टेट्समैन सी राज गोपाल आचार्य ऑन हिज बर्थ एनिवर्सरी इन अ ट्वीट मिस्टर मोदी सेड सी राज गोपाल आचार्य इज रिमेम्बर्ड फॉर हिज कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन टू द फ्रीडम स्ट्रगल एडमिनिस्ट्रेटिव एंड इंटेलेक्चुअल प्रावेस मिस्टर मोदी सेड ही वॉज अ वाइडली एडमायर्ड स्टेट्समैन एंड वन ऑफ हिज मोस्ट आर्डेंट वेल विशर्स वॉज सरदार पटेल The seventh International Science Festival of India will kick start today in Panaji, Goa. The festival will be inaugurated by the Union Minister for Science and Technology, Dr. Jitendra Singh, Goa Chief Minister Pramod Savant, Union Minister Shri Pad Nayak, and other dignitaries will be present. Over 10,000 students from all over the country are expected to participate in this four-day festival, which will take place in hybrid mode, virtual mode, and offline mode. Last year due to the pandemic the festival was conducted in virtual mode the theme of this year's festival is celebrating creativity in science about 2000 traditional artists will present scientific roles through their works of art the festival is also featuring activities like rainwater harvesting message and others in spotlight the news services division of all india radio will bring you special year end program on jan andolan se har ghar dastak tak tonight at 9:15 pm in our bilingual live phone in program corona jagrukta series dr aparna agarwal lady harding medical college new delhi will be with us today at 9:30 pm onwards to answer the queries related to corona virus listeners can ask questions to the expert on toll free number 18001175767 and on 0112331444 you can also post your queries on our twitter handle at air news alerts by hashtag ask air these programs can be heard on fm gold channel and additional frequencies the programs will also be available on our website news on air.nic.in and on our youtube channel news on air official now let us take a look at the weather update for the day national capital delhi experienced mist in the morning it recorded a minimum temperature of 11 degrees celsius while the maximum will be around 24 degrees mumbai is also expected to have partially cloudy sky chennai is likely to have generally cloudy sky with light rain or drizzle kolkata will have generally cloudy sky with light rain srinagar will have clear sky jammu will have mainly clear sky and now before we end the bulletin the headlines once again Nation pays tribute to Chief of Defence Staff General Bipin Rawat and others who lost their lives in a chopper crash in Tamil Nadu recently. Last rites to be performed with full military honours in Delhi Cantonment this evening. President Ramnath Kovind addresses the Human Rights Day function in New Delhi, says equality is the soul of human right, our rights are shared responsibilities. Special chartered flight brings back stranded Indians and Afghan citizens from Kabul. Three Holy Sri Guru Granth Sahib Ji Ramayan, Mahabharat and Bhagavad Gita also being brought back to the country. Prime Minister Narendra Modi to deliver India national statement in the first US organized virtual summit for democracy this evening. US sanctions on Iran are not relevant to Chabahar project informs external affairs minister in the Lok Sabha. Law and Justice Minister Kiran Rijiju says video conferencing rules implemented in 21 high courts to deal with pendency of cases. Over 131 crore 18 lakh doses of covid vaccine administered in the country so far recovery rate stands at 98.36% Prime Minister to inaugurate Sariu Nahar National Project at Balrampur Uttar Pradesh tomorrow and 7th International Science Festival of India to kick start today in Panji Goa and with that we end the midday news